Senate Judiciary Committee. Um, I forgot what day it is, uh, which is common under this pandemic, but I know mm -hmm. that it is Wednesday. And uh, Senator Ingram has an amendment to S219, which deals with data collection. Uh, Commissioner Sherling is here to comment on it, and um, uh, Ledge Counsel Bryn Hare also to explain anything. But Senator Ingram, perhaps you'd like to um, explain the, in the amendment and why you're offering it, and why you think that it should be done. Yes, thank you. Um, the amendment, as I said on, on the floor, I, um, I heartily support uh, the bill and I appreciate all the work that the committee has done on it. And I think it's, it's a very good bill. Um, I have been working on um, this idea of data collection and trying to um, improve it and introduce that as a, a standalone bill, um, S-262, earlier in the session. And I had uh, the opportunity to work with one of the members of the racial equity panel, uh, Stephanie Seguino, who is a UVM professor and is uh, very well versed in statistics and data. And um, she um, she actually offered the suggestions um, that are in the in the bill. Um, and, um, you know, I, I truly feel, I don't mean this to be any, you know, opposition to what you've done at all. I, I truly feel that this would be a, a, a way to strengthen the bill and, um, and improve on what's already good. Um, but since some of this work has already been done, I thought that I would offer it uh, for your consideration. So just briefly, the first, so the, the proposal is to um, amend uh, only section three um, so it would be um, to substitute this language for what is now section three in, in your bill. Um, and it adds some different categories to the kinds of uh, data that would be collected. Uh, for instance, it adds the passenger, not just the driver, but the passenger. Um, if, if there's any contraband that's found in the car, uh, this is all about uh, traffic stops. Um, and then a few different categories about force um, and injury, possible injury, or the impairment of the person um, to begin with, uh, the year of the vehicle in the state, the duration of the stop, and, um, the, and the total years of the officer's service. And then the next part of it is um, it adds the executive director of racial equity as um, a person that would um, be a part of uh, collecting the, uh, receiving the data as you had done in, in uh, S219. But it also, it changes from the private company that is the vendor now uh, that was chosen by the Criminal Justice Training Council, which I believe you've, you've heard some complaints about that company as well. But um, Stephanie Seguino was quite adamant that she really felt that they were not doing an adequate job. Um, so it shifts that to the Office of the Attorney General the thinking being that um, you know they are a, a public institution, they are a public entity, and and would be accountable to to the people in a way that a private company is not. So that that's essentially um, you know what what's contained in in the amendment, and um, I appreciate your considering it. And you know, as I said, I just had already done this work on it and um, felt that it would be worth um, worth taking a look at it. Thank you. Any questions for Senator Ingram? Uh, I, Senator I have Ruth. A quick question. Um, the, the one that jumps out at me as um, the biggest change is moving it from the private vendor to the AG's office. Has there been any discussion with the AG's office about whether they're willing and able? Uh, I, I had spoken to um, David Scher uh, quite a while ago, um, I will confess. I mean, since COVID and everything, I haven't talked to him since then. Uh, but he, you know, he's the one that's in charge of racial um, uh, matters. Uh, mm -hmm. And he was supportive uh, at, that, at the time. Mm -hmm. It's been a while. Okay. I don't have, I, I'm not sure that this is a, our questions. I have some comments and some real concerns about it, but I'll wait if that is more appropriate for discussion because they're not necessarily, um, I guess my, 
The question for Senator Ingram is what is the purpose in collecting some of these things like the duration of the stop, for example, if you have a um, stop that lasts, um, my sheriff sent me um, his last months of stops and he had a stop that lasted 46 minutes. The reason it lasted 46 minutes was because it was a DUI and they were waiting for the tow truck to come and get the car. And he had one that was 20 minutes because the guy couldn't find his insurance car and spent 20 minutes looking under seats and everywhere for his insurance card. So I don't understand why duration and years of service in the force would be. And so I have some other real concerns, but I, around the invasion of privacy of passengers, if I have a passenger in a car, they have no right to fight, ask me what my age or gender or race is, I don't believe. And um, also whether the cop thinks I have a psychological impairment and that's public information, remember. So now the cop writes down on there, you know, she seemed a little scattered. I think maybe she's depressed or bipolar. They're not, they're not equipped to do that. And that now becomes public information and everybody in Putney sees that um, I have a disorder. So the, those are my concerns. They're not particularly questions, but I guess my just question would be, what is the purpose? How is this used to help set our policy? Yeah, in general, the, the purpose, I mean, that, those are you know, very good questions. Um, but uh, the purpose is to identify ways in which people of color might be treated differently from, uh, from white people, basically. I mean, for instance, um, the duration of the stop, um, you know, the examples you gave are perfectly legitimate reasons why the stop might take longer. But there have been, you know, instances in which, um, you know, say a black man is detained much longer at a traffic stop than is necessary, uh, you know, than a white than a white person, you know, say their brake light was out or something, and um, you know they could just be it, it could you know sort of border on harassment that they kept the person of color you know longer. Um, so the, those are the kinds of things. Um, you know, the the state that the person was was in, um, you know, would would help to identify whether. Um, uh, you know, what, what it, it has to do a lot with what the officer, what we feel the officer is is uh, judging, um, and if there is any basis for um, perhaps you know discrimination uh, because of the way the the officer is interpreting uh, things so generally. Can can I just add here on this um, login sheet that he sent me? It mm -hmm. says call type ticket date time on scene at cleared at so that's already collected that's i don't it's, understand it's not, it, well it's not uniformly co collected is what my understanding is from from stephanie um she she was telling me that when they receive information it's not it's not necessarily uh consistently collected and it's not reported um consistently so it's very difficult which is compare. something we are working on okay uh -huh. yeah, senator benning has a question or a comment so Deb, first off, thanks for bringing this. It's opening up a conversation that I think we need to be considering as we go through this process. And we've heard from several people, slow down and make sure you do this right. Um, 37 years as a criminal defense attorney had me looking at the data collection portion of this with a very skeptical eye. The pretext for a stop in many instances is relatively minor. And I'll use the example of a recent case that I had where the pretext for the stop was your license plate is covered with snow, I can't read it. Which blossomed into a heck of a lot larger charge felony drug situation. And this is not an uncommon event. I'm not going to say it's common, but it is certainly um, surfaced enough in my work that I'm concerned when you expand the necessary data, you are expanding the length of time 
of interaction between a person who is stopped and the police officer. And bad things tend to happen the longer that goes on. There was a car in Hardwick that had four individuals in it that had pulled over. So it was about one o'clock in the morning. It had pulled over uh, so two of the people could get out and relieve themselves. And an officer came and what should have been a simple, hi, what are you guys doing here? Are you okay? All right, be careful. Thank you. Goodbye turned into a full-scale shakedown of all the individuals involved. And that led to subsequent charges, drug charges for all of them, because the officer decided along through that process that um, they probably wouldn't mind if a dog came along and sniffed the car. Those kinds of things happen to people of all skin color. And when we are talking about um, adding the necessary material that an officer has to collect, you are actually increasing the length of time that the officer has to question people. And that in turn leads to invasions of privacy like Jeanette is talking about, because this material is all on a, a public dispatch log. And I'm gonna have to push back a little bit on whoever told you that um, data about the time of the stop and the end of the stop is not collected uniformly. Virtually everybody in my neck of the woods that I'm aware of sends to the state police dispatch where they are, what time they made a stop, yep. when they concluded that stop. So I, I think that information is already available. But giving the officer a reason to ask questions about race um, that material comes into play along with the officer making observations about mental health or asking questions about mental health. And this amendment would in fact give them state authorization to continue the conversation in a way that could have the opposite effect of what you're trying to accomplish. So I'm, I'm somewhat concerned that it hasn't been fully fleshed out yet. It's a conversation that we need to have in a much wider setting. And right now I'm just not comfortable without witnesses from both sides coming in and, and talking about this subject. Um, so if I vote against your amendment, you know why. Well, Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Senator Baruth. Uh, question for Bryn. I, I don't have our 219 in front of me. Um, uh, so I'm looking at the amendment only. Um, doesn't 219, as we passed it yesterday to third reading, doesn't it expand the categories of collection for the kinds of um, contact? So in other yeah. words, uh, some of what's here in terms of use of force is already covered in what we passed in 219. Some of it is, yes, that's correct. So for the record, Bryn Hare from Legislative Council, um, what Section 3 of 219 does is it expands the data collection to use of force, whether physical force was employed um, in effectuating the stop. Um, so that there is an overlap there. So the type of force is not, I don't, there's no requirement in S219 that the type of force that's used um, I'm sorry, there is a requirement that the whether force was used and the type of force be collected. Um, yeah. But other, like the type of resistance offered is not, is not required in 219. 219 reads, um, whether physical force was employed or threatened in affecting the stop, and if so, the type of force employed and whether the force resulted in bodily injury or death, and whether a written warning was issued, blah, blah, blah. And um, so it's, it's somewhat similar to uh, Senator Ingram's amendment, um, <clears throat> although it, I don't see it getting into the justification of the stop and that sort of thing. Senator White. So could I ask uh, uh, just another clarification here? My understand about the vendor. My understanding is that the way it works is that you um, have. Maybe Commissioner Sterling would be a better person to ask. That well, I want to pose the question so first so that he can see if okay. I'm. Did you have 
all these agencies that collect the information and what we're trying to do is make sure that they're collecting them in the same manner so they're using the same coding then that information gets fed into the vendor who then collates in a, it in a way that can be um, sent to VCIC and other places and that the vendor that that is the role of the vendor is to collate that information as it comes in and if, if I'm wrong I mean if I'm right why would that live with the AG's office this is a I thought a technical um, a technical thing that the vendor did not a response to public or anything so just try, correct me if I'm wrong on that thank you who somebody Michael Sherl, uh Commissioner Sherling are you available I am sir uh, sorry about the uh, oh no. it's sun it's looks fine. good <laughs> we don't see any sun here in southern Vermont today right now I don't think it's sun I think it's just uh, it's just daylight um, oh. <clears throat> uh, to be responsive uh, to Senator White uh, that is correct um, we have two vendors right now um, I, I do want to take one second and just say uh, the 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 folks that are being referred to as the vendor is, is not a for-profit entity. Um, every state has selected one of these folks um, to do data analysis, and they are a trusted entity. They do data analysis not just on uh, our race data collection and traffic stops, but on opiates, on domestic violence, on sexual violence, on overall crime. And it does, uh, it gives me great pause when I hear folks uh, saying that there has been testimony here at the legislative level with distrust of what uh, these folks do. They do it in good faith. They do not do it. Uh, they do not do data analysis with any outcomes in mind. And they use trusted methodologies that are in play on a national level. So I really want to push back in the most stern terms around any distrust around the external data analysis that's being conducted at, at a statewide level. With that said, uh, there are challenges to the two platforms that we use to collect data and how they allow data analysis to be done. And Senator White is exactly right. That's where uh, the challenges have historically been. We are on the precipice now of a selection of a statewide system that would enable uh, not only uh, better data collection in the field, but much more robust data analysis at the back end to include the development of public facing dashboards that would show uh, the public municipalities and others data on the fly without having to be a data scientist and at the same time provide raw data to anyone who's interested in analyzing that data whether it's one of our colleges or universities an external researcher somewhere else in the country or someone who just uh, has an interest in data and wants to unpack it uh, on their home computer um, all of the information that we're going to be um, collecting in the future, the next level of transparency is to allow others to analyze that data and query it and ask questions of it that uh, in some cases we haven't even thought to ask and then loop back to us and say, hey, did you know that your data says X? And we may say, no, we didn't even think to ask that question. Um, so that's the future of uh, data collection and analysis at a macro level. Thank you. I have other comments on the draft, but I'll uh, I will hold for well, the, the chair to. If I could just say the uh, commissioner, Sherman, I didn't. I don't think I used the phrase distrust of the 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 uh, company. I, I I what I have heard is that what you're talking about about the platforms and the lack of the dashboard has been um, of of concern to a lot of people. Um, I, I said that the Office of the Attorney General would be a public entity, which I think would be an added bonus. I, I didn't say be, it's because we don't trust uh, what the vendor is trying to do. I just don't think, it, I think it could be strengthened the data reporting uh, if we had uh, a different way of doing it. Oh, I, I appreciate that, Senator. I would just suggest uh, that um, a, it doesn't need to be recodified in law uh, at this stage because we're going to make that all of this data um, as transparent as possible. And if we fail to do that, then um, I would suggest that the codification be that we simply are mandated to put uh, all of our data, not just around race data collection, on force, on responses within communities, on all, all the things I've mentioned, domestic and sexual violence, 
of course, redacting uh, personal identifying information, but all of that data should be forward facing for anyone to query uh, in any way that they're capable here in the 21st century. Thank you. Um, I, I, uh, I have a couple of suggestions. One would be that um, we take up S-264 in August. S-264 is the amendment that's being offered by Senator Ingram. 262. Yeah. I believe. No, actually, my, well, my computer said, uh, you may be correct. Anyway. Okay. With whatever. Hey, with take up S-264 or 262 in August. There is another issue that I wanted to raise about, we did hear many witnesses during our discussions of this suggesting that we should not just be limiting the traffic stops but also stops of pedestrians, stops of other nature that are made. Um, so because um, if you, you know, rural communities, it is traffic stops, but in some of the cities and major towns, they are also pedestrian stops where somebody is uh, stopped and so forth. So I think it does deserve for discussion. I will mention that there have been disagreements there was a study done uh, a while back by the uh, University of Vermont that involved the Bennington Police Department, then the Center for Justice Research did a further study of that. And the two groups disagreed strongly on the results of both. Um, and so you had the argument between whether you call them vendors or people that were assessing the data ended up in a big argument. So I do think that issue also needs to be resolved. However, um, so Senator White, who's an expert on. No, no, I was just going to say, um, could we hear, Sen the commissioner said that he had some other comments and I would like to hear from that because my intention, unless I'm convinced otherwise by somebody is to vote against this amendment, but I would like to hear the commissioner uh, on his other, on the other, uh, I'm, su I'm suggesting that we continue the conversation about this subject that's been raised today and by oh. yesterday by Senator Ingram's amendment that we continue that discussion after the August after the July break in okay. August that there are other things regarding data collection that need to be examined including the vendor, but we could use S-264 or 262, whichever the number is, as a vehicle for that discussion. So uh, if you have questions, if uh, Commissioner or uh, Senator Ingram, did you want to comment? And then Commissioner Sterling. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, would, um, I would be satisfied with that and I would withdraw the amendment uh, so that you can the committee can take more more time and I appreciate your uh, willingness to do that and and I would uh, respectfully ask that you um, do definitely take it up in August rather than wait till um, 2021 uh, just because I won't be in the Senate in 2021 so I and I would love to be able to um, kind of see th this process uh, play out so I, I appreciate the committee's attention to it and um, and if you um, will give it a uh, good thought later, I will I would withdraw it. Assuming that judiciary is able to meet after the August break, after the July break in August, we will take it up. Um, I, that, I, I believe that that's the intent to have committees meet and work on legislation during the break, as well as the big bill. So um, that, that would be the only thing. And I, I recognize that who knows who would be the chair of Senate Judiciary in 2021. So I'm not um, counting any heads and maybe um, a bad year for incumbents. <laughs> Bryn will be the chair. I don't Just know. a guess. Okay. Well, she may be. Uh, Commissioner Sterling, did you have some final comments? Uh, I, I think I have a variety, but I think I'll hold most of them um, other than uh, a couple uh, just as folks are thinking about this over the next couple of months and maybe uh, adding to drafts, um, collecting data on all interactions is the the total is the goal, as Senator Sears indicated, not just on traffic stops, that we should be able to unpack this for all community interactions. Um, and uh, I agree with uh, the comments that uh, 
Um, both Senator Benning and Senator White indicated about some of the concerns about scope and the potential for creeping into other um, uh, sort of fishing expeditions on, on stops with some of the data that's being collected. But most importantly for future drafting, uh, the section on uh, collecting information, biographical information on passengers is currently not legal in most instances. We have to have a reason. I have to have reasonable grounds to identify and interact with a passenger. We can't just do that blanketly. So you'd be creating a statutory construct that would create a whole set of interactions that would be new. And as Senator Benning indicated, all kinds of things can happen um, when you uh, create uh, more complexity uh, roadside, both, both the things that he indicated, but there's also a variety of other concerns I think we would have about expanding uh, time roadside. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, and uh... I had the I had the bill on my computer here, so let me check the number. You are correct, Senator Ingram. It is S two sixty two, which was introduced by Senator Ingram and Baruth, others. Senator Baruth, that's part of the committee goes. It is two sixty two, so. Uh, there is a commitment to take up the issues contained in S-262 um, after the July break. And uh, we look forward to continuing the conversation. Unfortunately, Bryn had to leave before we could finish because she has to watch the house. I don't know why anybody would want to do that, but <laughs> maybe I think she, she has a choice. House. I guess it's her job. I don't I know. I guess, it, yeah. <laughs> that would be the only reason. <laughs> right. Well, thank you all very much. Um, thank you very much, Sanders. I appreciate your uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.